Hi everyone, <coughs> Andrea here. It's really hot still in the UK. It's the hottest summer we've had for a long time. They're expecting it to go on into August. It's killing me. I don't do the heat very well. So I'm in the baby's room because we've actually got a fan in the baby's room to try and keep her cool. So if you can hear that in the background, do apologise, but it's the only way I'm ever going to film. I haven't even put any makeup on because I just feel like it's going to just, so hot, it's just going to run off. So the window's obviously to this side of me and there's no light source to that side, which is why. But right, it's so hot, I don't care. So this is the June wrap up. So these are all the books I read in June and I read nine. So that's not too bad. Um, so we'll, we'll just start with the first book I read, which was uh, Making Sense of Marilyn by Andrew Norman. So this book is about, obviously, Marilyn Monroe. Um, uh, I think Andrew Norman is some sort of psychiatrist or psychologist, uh, does it say? And he has written quite a lot of books. anything about him in here he's read quite he's written quite a lot of books mostly about things like I mean he's written a book about Thomas Hardy and Jane Austen war ones Churchill Hitler T.E. Lawrence also Agatha Christie um, so this is trying yeah he's got a medical background so it's to try and set shed new light on the enigmatic character of Monroe. he doesn't I'm not saying it's a bad book, it's not a bad book, it's alright, it's not brilliant. Um, there's nothing in here I didn't already know. There's no new slant on anything, whether it's her death or her life. Um, there are some, there's the photograph section which has her family tree and a birth certificate in it. Um, some of the photographs are ones that came out uh, when Michelle Morgan published her first book. So it's an alright section of, of photographs and it's got some pictures of some of the better books on, on her, like My Sister Marilyn and by Bernice, her sister, half-sister, and um, the book by James Doherty, the first book by James Doherty. And there, there's some nice pictures, nothing special. It's alright. Um, I, I certainly wouldn't put it in the books you must have to have on Marilyn Monroe, but it's an okay book. It's not... It's not a book that's going to make you think, oh my god, no, please, no. It's not going to be in the top ten books you must have, but it's also not going to be in the top ten books you should avoid, so it was all right. The next book I read was a Michelle Morgan book. It's come out, it came out, I think, 2015, I want to say. Yeah, 2015, and that is uh, Madonna, Michelle Morgan, also known as the Mammoth Book of Madonna. Uh, on the back it says... The Real Madonna, 30 Remarkable Years. I love this picture on the front. It's not your traditional biography in the sense that it's, it's not chaptered and it doesn't tell the story from beginning to end. But what she does do is she picks a photograph, like this one, and then on the next page it just gives you a little bit of insight into what was going on at that time and what the photo was about. So this was during the Blonde Ambition tour. And then... Uh, Marilyn and uh, Marilyn, Madonna and Elton John, I've got Marilyn on the brain, uh, a rainforest benefit in 1998, explains that they didn't always get on and they haven't got on that well and then 2004, there are some fantastically amazingly gorgeous pictures of Madonna in this book, if I can find one which I won't be able to because I'm actually looking for it, this one, she didn't like this dress apparently but I think it was stunning. I love that dress. And um, that one, it's a nice picture of her. Some of the early ones are, are lovely as well. Let's see if there's a one I can find. This one's a fantastic early shot of her. So yeah, this is definitely with, if you're a Madonna fan, you should definitely have this in your collection. The photos are fantastic. And a little bit of insights into what was going on in that picture. It's just absolutely amazing. Really interesting. Love this picture, it's just done in there. So I love Madonna. I'm more of just into her music and, the, and some of the films. Um, I'm not really into big biographies on her, but I, I picked this one up because obviously it is Michelle and I do know Michelle. Michelle is a friend of mine. Um, 
but uh, I really really enjoyed this book it was it was it's one of those books you could just put down pick up have a look at a photo think oh what's going on then and just read that bit and, and about it and it, it, it is there there so there are some fantastic shots this is on the confessions tour uh, I have to say that Confessions is one of my favourite albums, if not my favourite Madonna album, along with True Blue. I love Confessions. Um, yeah, the light's not brilliant, I'm afraid. I might try and make it better for if I film up here again. Um, obviously, that was a very controversial image and part of the, one of her tours in the Confessions show. But I think it looks, she looks fantastic absolutely fantastic in some of these pictures and they're not always going to be the most obvious pictures they're really good so that's a lovely picture of her a nice nice simple dress it's not the sort of thing you normally would expect Madonna to be wearing because we all think of her image being the sexy star with the you know something like her we don't think of her being wearing more sophisticated items but she does and she looks fantastic absolutely fantastic in some of these pictures so that's from the true blue video first album i bought loved it so yeah i really like this book it's just something you can pick out it's gonna look nice on my shelf for my other books and i'll probably pick it up again and read it again and, and now i've read this i might actually go and buy a full length bio on madonna so michelle if you're watching this you're the expert what full length biography is the best one which one should i buy so yeah i recommend this it's really really good the pictures are fantastic and it's not too in depth but it's also not so vague that you don't know what's going on next was uh the next nikki french book in the series of the eat free decline stories which is waiting for wednesday i just have to read the back because been well low <laughs> somebody's chatting downstairs um so yes, there's two sort of stories in this. There's a murder that the police are investigating and then something happens and she finds out about these missing girls and she starts going after them and he's this, this, this person is so careful that nobody knows he's actually committed any crimes. Um, it's quite thick. So yeah, basically what happens is another police the official police psychotherapist sets up Frida and her friends and colleagues by sending a load of people to go in and say that they are psychopaths, they're worried about hurting somebody, they have fantasies about hurting women and only one of those people reports this person, these people to the, the police, there's four of them. The other three, which is Frida Kleins and her colleagues, dismiss the person as being um, not a psychopath and or a sociopath uh, because they admit they have these feelings and they're worried they're going to act out on them so they're not likely to actually do it um, but a chance remark that's made during the session with this person and it's said by each one makes her think there's something somewhere has gone on and, and she actually traces it back and finds out that there's been a serial killer on the loose uh, for several years and tracks it down it, really really good really that, this one was one of my favorite ones I've read the three of them now there's six and I've read three I've got five this one was really good really enjoyed that one then of course it, the Stephen King book for the month of June was Stephen King writing his Richard Bachman and it's thinner so this tells the story of Billy Halleck he is a overweight, I want to say lawyer, happy married, but he is with his wife and they're driving through downtown and an old gypsy woman steps in front of the car and he knocks her over, he can't stop in time, I'm not going to go into why, you'll have to read the book, um, and kills her. The courts clear him of any wrongdoing um, even though that the investigation was a bit of whitewash and in fact when uh, because Billy is such an upright standing citizen that, that the, and friends of the police they did, didn't did even do the basics which they should do which is like a breath test even though he begged for it 
um, and as he leaves the courthouse um, an old gypsy man which turns out to be the woman's father they're like hundreds of years old touches him on the face and whispers the word thinner and from that point he starts losing weight of course being overweight is not a major concern until he starts getting dangerously thin and other people who were involved in the case are also developing illnesses so he goes um to try and track the the gypsies down to get him to take it off um, and in the end the old gypsy does agree to take it off but with a condition and it's it is so typically brilliantly Stephen King that that what happens at, at the end it is just classic King so I don't know why he wrote over Bachman but to me this is it is a classic Stephen King novel um, if you like Stephen King do read it do read it I'm waiting for July's book to arrive it should arrive today I'm hoping it does so I can get started on that although I've got two books on the go at the moment so I might wait for a little bit um, but yeah absolutely fantastic very pleased to actually finish nine books because as you know with a baby it's very difficult to find time to read and I was reading in the bath a lot but of course it's so hot now um, although we haven't got a drought at the moment it, it could happen so we're all taking showers so there goes my uh, reading so most of my reading this month so far has been done in the hairdressers when I have my hair done and then the next book was Call the Midwife, a true story of East End in the 1950s by Jennifer, Jennifer Worth. Of course, we all know the TV series that is based on this, no, on this uh, memoir. I never saw the first few seasons of Call the Midwife. Um, it wasn't something that particularly interested me at the time. I have since started watching it. My mum loves it mainly because it was in the 50s and she loves the music, which is fine. I don't have a problem. I love the music too. Um, I actually love the series and I probably will get them on DVD. And there are photographs of the East End and of the, the people and, and actually, I think this is one that they actually use on the the video, on the, on the opening. And of course this is the TV cover, it's got the three of the cast on the front and the full cast at the back. Um, yeah, it's pretty much like the series, it's really good. Um, some of it's really, really sad. Um, women trying to give themselves abortions, premature babies, the workhouse, what it was like in the 50s and how difficult it was, especially for the for women up until modern day, really, how looked down on having a baby was and it wasn't taken very seriously yet it could kill both mother and child and it was only really in the the onset where we get these very trained nurses, midwives, that it started being taken seriously, um, the maternal health. Absolutely fantastic um, reading. You've got everything from people trafficking, prostitution, poor people, bomb sites, kids. Um, and of course our favourite characters, we've got Sister Monica Joan, Sister Julianne, um, obviously uh, Trixie and of course Jenny as well. Uh, uh, it's lovely, lovely story. I mean, it's nice, it's based on obviously a true story, the series, so it's worth picking up the book to have a read if you like the series. I, cause, and as, like I said, I didn't actually see the original. So after that I finally finished listening to The Memoirs of Sherlock Holmes by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, read by Stephen Fry, listened to that on Audible. Um, is that like any collection of short stories? They were good and they were bad in all collections. Some of them you just thought that didn't go anywhere and then other ones are really, really good. I can't think of any of them offhand. offhand. I should have written them down, I know. Um, but of course this one, The Memoirs of Sherlock Holmes, does contain the final problem, which is the one in which um, Sherlock plunges allegedly to his death on the Reichenbach Falls while going after that Professor Moriarty. So that's worth reading just for that one. I read Chasing Harry Winston by Lauren Weisberger. She wrote The Devil Wears Prada, which I really liked. There's only so many books with these uh, middle-aged, oh, not middle-aged because they're only in their early 30s. These women in their early 30s that are Sex and City style women living in the city on their own, chasing men, having sex, and, and it just becomes the same old, same old, dull, boring. The book was okay, don't get me wrong, but it was just like, in places it's unbelievable. You've always got the, the very rich one, 
who is also beautiful, makes a, a fortune, uh, makes her, uh, her living is just looking beautiful, and then she finds a career magically. You've got the really hard working one who saved up to buy an apartment but it's, t t it's really small and then there's somebody above her making a lot of noise who's got commitment issues and then there's the one who's who wants a commitment, can't have it because her boyfriend runs off with somebody else and lives in a dingy studio apartment and then suddenly it all comes right, Rich one moves to California to become a writer um, to help screenwrite a, a, a film and so the apartment that she lives in which is her parents, she lets her friends magically stay in for free. It's like, yeah, write about the real world. Write about real people living in New York. Enough of that. Uh, and I finished one book on my Kindle, which was Silence by Natasha Press. And I gotta be honest, I started this back in February when I was in hospital. It's not that it's a bad book, it's not. Um, it's just that I just never got around to finishing it. So I, I did finish it. So this is a story of a girl named Cole. No, that's the girlfriend, boyfriend. I can't remember her name. Oakley. That's it. It's too hot. I told you, this the heat is killing me. <coughs> Who, from the age of five to about 13, was abused by a friend of her father with her father's full knowledge. Um, obviously told that nobody would believe her if she spoke about it. She just stopped speaking completely. And it's not until just after she's 16 that she starts speaking again. Her best friend Cole becomes her boyfriend and she just manages to communicate without speaking. Um, Cole texts her good night and I love you every night and she doesn't text back, she won't say it, she's afraid. Um, but when it does come, when the truth does come out, everybody's really supportive. The only thing is then she decides that she can't cope with living in the same area where her father was and they all moved to Australia, leaving Cole behind. Although they will be back because they have to come back to testify at the father and the father's friend's trial. Sorry, I do keep it in the tripod. There is a second book called Silence Broken. I haven't got that. I probably will download it and read it. It was an okay book, but I'm not going to go out, out of my way to find it. The second one. And the last book is one of my favourite authors, Peter James. The new Peter James, if you don't, came out in May. Got it on release day. Put it away to take it on holiday. Read it on holiday. Yay! So this one tells a story, um, there are several stories in this and they all link together. Kit Brown is a successful businessman, allegedly, who has a gambling problem and he's losing all his money. He takes his son, Mungo, who names their child Mungo, to watch Brighton play at the new Amex Stadium, which has just opened its first match of the season at the Amex. And there's going to be a, well, there is a bomb scare. Um, basically, a bomb is planted, which is in the shape, shape of a digital camera. Um, Kip's up in the box expecting his son to, to join him because his son's disappeared off to see his friend because he spotted his friend. Um, and Mungo disappears, he's kidnapped. The bomb is made short walk of by DCI Grace who happens to be in the Amex with his son um, Bruno um, and he manages to get it out but the, the turns out the camera's not actually a bomb it's got all the equipment in there but no actual detonator and it was done so that they could see that yes we can do it we can get it past security um but on this occasion we've not done it so the ransom demand comes in for mungo and um his dad's got no money so he's planning on taking it from the client account and then can replace it there's a lot of ins and outs on this with um, Albanian criminals, underground gangsters and it turns turns into the um, quite a sinister story. It turns out that Mungo and his friend Alexander planned the kidnap just to teach his father a lesson because he doesn't think that his father loves him um, because he had a sister who died and it was all about them but in truth they're just overprotective of him and want to keep him safe from harm um but they it then goes wrong because alexander's father is one of the big albanian criminals the biggest the, the, the father's boss is now going straight and trying to improve relations in the city and and do everything right but alexander goes to get Mungo some food, they're going to let him go and they're going to come clean and then Mungo does actually, yeah, get kidnapped by 
cohorts of Alexander's father who is now behind a proper kidnap plot is so convoluted but if you read it it makes sense it's really good Peter James books are always really good the only one I haven't liked in recent years The House on Cold Hill and that's just because I thought that I thought he could do better but I do I do like them and I always buy them when they come out um definitely pick up this it's a good one the DCI Grace books are, are really 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 good actually to be honest so that's what I read in June. I don't do a TBR anymore because I just don't know. I've started reading um, Judy and I by Sid Left, which is obviously about Judy Garland. I've started reading Lee Child's Killing Floor, which is the first of the Jack Reacher books. We won't go into Tom Cruise playing Jack Reacher in the films because that's just odd. Um, but I have brought my TBR jar. We haven't pulled anything out for a while because it took me ages to get through the last one. Obviously, The Beatles Can't Buy Me Love came out that and I'm still reading that because it's absolutely massive. So I just read a couple of pages every now and again. But just to try and get one out of here because I will be putting more in soon. I'm going to go with this one. I will be doing a book haul at some point, but I'm really not buying that many books at the moment because I have just got so many. Um, I've got to get rid of some of <laughs> them. So I'm buying the odd one. So let's have a look see what we're pulling off this time. Oh, this is Rudolph Valentino, The Untold Story by Wayne Vincent Hartford. I'm not even sure what that is though. I'm, I think that's a, a sequel to another book which I've started but I haven't finished. But I will pull it out anyway because it's only a small one so we'll, we'll get through. Um, I think the first one is Valentino Speaks and it's about Valentino talking from beyond the grave. So that just goes to show what that sort of book's about. There you go. I will pull that out and I will read that uh, hopefully by the end of this month. Uh, it shouldn't take me long, it's only a small one. So that's what I read in June. Hopefully, hopefully I'll be able to do some more soon and uh, I'll be able to read a few more books and I'll let you know what's going on in the world of my reading as and when it happens. If I can make an update I will. I might try and do Friday reads again. It, I started doing it and then it stopped. It's just so hot camera stopped then I think it overheated I'm not surprised when they say um but yeah that's it I am currently working my way through some of your videos your wrap-ups from your TBRs I do love seeing what you're reading and what you think of books because I do still make a note of books that I want to re read I know I know um and pick up so you never know and I will see you all very very soon with another bookish video bye